Good evening, fam. Last week, we looked at how authors can create and maintain their own platforms. This week, we're going to dive into the social media platforms at our fingertips. Most of us already use social media, probably daily, so why not use that time to reach new fans? Tonight, we're chatting with T. Morris and his lovely wife, Pip Valentine. Uh, T. and Pip literally wrote the book on social media for writers. Join us live as we discuss new ways to make social media work for you. So, friends, let's get to it. Hi, guys. Thanks Hi. for joining Good us. Hi. Good to, to see here. you both. And, and um, you two, you're not just a writing powerhouse couple, but you're also a podcasting couple. That was actually uh, one of the ways we met. Yeah, um, and <laughs> and I, I into that. in the podcasting in the podcasting circles, I'm known as the great enabler. Um, <laughs> and and I got Pip podcasting. There are some other author friends that that uh, that that both I and we have have gotten podcasting before. Um, and so yeah, I mean, but but that's that's kind of that, that we've been podcasting since the early days. Uh, I believe Pip went live with her first podcast in '06. Mm -hmm. 2006 and um and i did i i can also say i was one of the first people that did a non-writing writers podcast which was back in 2005 it was called the survival guide to writing fantasy mm -hmm. and it did not talk about the craft we talked about the business we talked about behind the scenes we talked about we talked about something as simple as and believe it or not yes authors get this wrong how to make a business card and yeah. and things like that. I mean, yeah, and, a simple thing. <laughs> and it really and it really didn't become a a popular uh, a popular venue because people are like, I never thought about this stuff. I just thought about telling. And I'm like, yeah, of course. People love talking about the 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 writing, the craft, you know, the the business. But, well, I'm sorry, but the writing and the craft. But mm -hmm. nobody talked about the business, and that's what I brought in 2005. And here we are, 15, actually now it's coming up on 16 years, <laughs> and we're still doing this. We're still doing this. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm proud to say on this podcast, it's the first chance I've had to, to be able to talk about this, uh, the fourth edition of this book, Podcasting for Dummies, mm. uh, this came out in mid-November. It's already earned out. Wow. It's already yes. earned out. Everybody's doing podcasts. I just, I just want you all to know. I just want you all to know. I am so used to guests who don't who who don't really go on podcasts. They've never really podcasted. They're they're just excited to be on to to talk about you know the topic that we're doing. And I'm just going through the spiel of these are the things you should know. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, wait a minute, <laughs> <laughs> these guys literally wrote the book on it. I'm just gonna like <laughs> take my foot out of my mouth and just listen to them for a minute. So, so that's so why we're here. <laughs> so I'll tell you. So I'll tell you a quick story about podcasting and 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 the two of us, me and Pip. Uh, mm -hmm. We were this was this was when we were releasing the first book in the steampunk series, um, the Ministry of Peculiar Occurrences, mm -hmm. and um, and our agent contacts us and goes, "Now look, I just bought, booked you an interview on the podcast from the League of Steam, so you got to be on your best behavior, T. You got to be on your best behavior. <laughs> you need the one you got to watch. I'm just saying." And and then and then Pip thought the entire week was like your best behavior, best behavior. I'm like, okay, best behavior, fine, fine, fine. And um, we're there, and the League of Steam come on, and it's us and the League of Steam, and 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 we're big fans of the League of Steam. And Pip thought the entire time was like, just don't screw it up, T. Just just your best behavior. And they're doing some sound checks, a few few little things, and so on. Yeah, hear, and then you hear a noise. We hear a noise. A little <laughs> <laughs> and we we and everybody goes quiet and I go I'm sorry what was that? <laughs> and there was a few more seconds of quiet and and uh, and I'm prompted this from from uh, Lauren's uh, Lauren's glass of wine. Um, they suddenly start talking and they go well, um, Mr. Morris and they actually called me Mr. Morris. Mr. Morris, um, one of our one of our members of the league esteem has uh, opened up an alcoholic beverage. We hope you don't mind. I was like, oh, it's that kind of podcast. Yeah, like, no. like, it was and my best well. behavior bullshit. Yeah. Pip pops a, Pip pops a bottle. Myself. Never mind. Pip pops a bottle of wine. I got a beer. They're laughing. We're laughing. And 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 they you know were that like, was like eight years ago now, too. Yeah, I know. I know. But it was funny years because of podcasting tips. League of Steam said we just didn't want to seem unprofessional because we're big fans of yours, and we're like, well, that's something we have in common because we're big fans of you. Again, we all start laughing, and 
the, the familiarity I think that Pip and I have with podcasting, I think makes this process a lot easier for us. Mm. And it's just something that, that we, yeah, uh, we, love, we love podcasting. I yeah. Mean, we, we love doing it. It happened 15 years. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's our thing. We love so it. podcasting in 2016, a podcast about business topics, and then you're writing steampunk. You guys really like those niche little <laughs> markets, huh? We do. Well, um, when we first started writing steampunk, it had not sort of taken off. We, we were in right. like uh, 2000. We, actually, I, I saw a Facebook post from myself 12 years ago that said, just starting to write steampunk. And I was like, oh. But, um, but yeah, it, it actually fits in well with um, um, podcasting, um, th those little, little niche markets. And a lot of people know us through uh, the series we did. We actually did a... Uh, series of short fiction um, stories in our universe, but written majorly by other people. We invited people to our sandbox, and that was the Tales from the Archives. And we had a lot of fun inviting friends from the podcasting sphere and the writing sphere to come in and um, produce. They wrote the stories, and we produced the audio. So um, they've, they've linked together really well, podcasting and steampunk. So what... What inspired you to write this book on social media? Where did that come from? Well, um, it was interesting. We were called on, I think it was the James River Writers in Richmond, Virginia, yes. yeah, it was. Uh, who wanted, oh, T is a communications professional. It's what he does for a day job. And um, one of our friends down there was like, would you like to come and you know give a short presentation on social media for writers, which is a massive topic. And uh, so we were like, oh, yeah, okay. And we started writing things down, and it just grew and grew and grew and grew. And we thought, oh, hold on. This this could be a whole book. Yeah, it could definitely be a whole book. And then um, we ended up, we were like, well, maybe we'll self-publish it. And then Writer's Digest um, picked it up and produced it until, of course, they went uh, bankrupt. I think it was last year or the year before. Um, but, but for a while there, it was out with Writer's Digest, which was really cool. Um, but we found a lot of people who knew maybe they knew a few things about some particular social media platform but they didn't know other things you know so there were some areas like we were like have you have you thought about streaming have you thought about you know being on instagram and so we hoped to kind of broaden broaden the um base for people for writers to sort of experiment with social media and what are some of the different platforms you cover in that book and also in your dummy series too that you have on your desk too? <laughs> right. Um, um, we, well, I mean, we cover the big three, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, at least that's, that's what we have dubbed the big three. There are some that we avoid like LinkedIn. We don't really go mm -hmm. into LinkedIn because yeah, there are a lot of writers that are on LinkedIn, but I mean, I've been on LinkedIn since uh, 2005 and I can honestly say I've never gotten a writing gig through LinkedIn. No, it's more like a networking thing. But yeah, we've also um, done uh, Pinterest. Yeah, Pinterest is another one. Uh, we, there were a couple that we got, we did in the first edition that we got rid of in the most recent edition, like Periscope. Um, and, uh, and Google Plus. Google, <laughs> Google Plus. Plus. Yeah, we, we, we retired. Google um, um, we, we also talk about uh, blogging and WordPress specifically. We talk mm -hmm. about WordPress. Um, and um, and then in this in, in this edition we actually addressed streaming uh, yeah. as as a, as a as a very viable um, and very uh, and 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 uh, and very worthwhile platform. It's only been uh, in the past few months. Pip and I actually started up doing writing streams, like where we where we work live on works in progress. And I am really amazed at how well and how responsive and, and at how responsive people are to us working on something in real time. Yeah. Now, we, we, uh, one, of the, one of the big concerns I think people would have is, well, you know, are you, um, you know, are, are, are people going to be writing, you know, backseat writing? And it's like, no, that's not how that works. They basically hear us work through ideas. They hear, they hear me and Pip brainstorm they even uh watched us uh we we have a we have a whiteboard in our in our uh, in our studio a whole it, wall that's a white wall, wall. <laughs> that, that, that's done with whiteboard uh, whiteboard paint and they watched us map out our entire year of projects we want to get done <clears throat> personal deadlines other projects that we have in the works and we still left space for off. sorry 
and, and, and we and we still have we still have in the, we still have space for new ideas if they come up, if they come along. So so it's really a, a look into this is how you know it isn't just somebody with an ascot and a pipe and and we're and we're typing behind a keyboard. It's it's actually two people that are brainstorming ideas as well as just working on something new. Hmm. So it sounds like you have different purposes for the different platforms that you're on. What are some of the platforms that you guys use regularly and what do you use them for? Oh. Well, there are some platforms that are definitely more niche, like um, Pinterest is very popular with romance authors, um, yeah. a lot of uh, fashion <laughs> stuff. Yes. That like to post. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Tumblr has definitely got a YA kind of bent to it. Um, so in, in the book, we kind of say you don't have to be everywhere, just yeah. be where your audience is. And yep. um, with the big, big three, then yeah, you kind of need to um, use those pretty much whichever genre you are if you right. want to um, get their reach because they're just so massive that it's hard to ignore them. And I mean, there are, there are going to be some platforms that you concentrate more than others, and there's going to be some where you where you use them as to cross pollinate. Like a lot of the content that's on my author page on Facebook, a lot of that content actually comes from Instagram. Because when I'm when I'm streaming, I use uh, I use Instagram and Twitter to promote the streams because that's really where the the streaming audience is. It's on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, it's not on Facebook. And but I but I have Facebook. I have my Facebook page plugged into my Instagram, so it's still I still manage to cover uh, cover that. And then you've got um, and then you would you, you know the other places we are you know. Blogging is kind of has kind of taken a back seat for now. Um, mm -hmm. I, I was actually doing quite well in blogging until uh, until COVID hit, and 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 in a weird way, I stopped blogging after COVID. And I and if you were to ask me why, I couldn't tell you. I honestly couldn't tell you. It's just yeah, I, th I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that that, that there was a routine in the day, and I and I found a slot where I could blog, and that was taken away from me after after COVID hit. Yes, because um, what even is time? I mean, we don't know anymore. Right. <laughs> what but, is a weird um, <laughs> But But we wound up, uh, you know, podcasting more. We found up streaming more. So, you know, that would be another platform that, you know, we talk about podcasting and streaming and we talk about how these are both beneficial to writers. And, and we, but, uh, but I actually, but if you were asking me, what am I proudest of? And what are the, what are the chapters that I think people really should pick up the book for? We have, uh, we have at least three chapters on do's and don'ts mm -hmm. and, and yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, part of the reason why we, we really felt inspired to come back with a second edition and, and give it a whole new look, give it a whole new feel was mainly because there were people that we could just see that just, they were doing the same stupid shtick that we saw five years ago. Um, you know, feeds that are just nothing. Uh, whether it's Twitter or whether it's Instagram, where it's the same promotion over and over and over again. And after a while you just go, I'm done. Mm. I'm done. There's got to be more than just advertising your book. And if you are still on social media and you're advertising a book that you wrote five years ago, and yeah, we've seen that too. You're doing something incredibly wrong. Um, that's probably the most common thing that I see, especially on Twitter, but, but also on Facebook too, is authors befriending or following other authors and then uh, advertising their book. Yeah. And you're wondering how many sales are they getting out of that? So I guess that's the don't. Yeah, that's we don't. cover that one. We cover that one. Yeah, don't, yeah. <laughs> if you're just trying to, sell, and we've had this in real life with writers groups as well, where if you're just trying to sell to other authors, you are really limiting what yeah. you're going to do. And also yeah. you're going to get tuned out or blocked or, you know. Um, or you stop, or in the case of uh, Pip and myself, you stop going to that writer's group. That's right. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's, that's the right. bottom line. You just stop going to that writer's group. And uh, I, think we, I think we also covered, um, you know, when people, like I've had experiences where I've had a conversation with writers, maybe we're in an anthology together or something like that. And then suddenly I find mysteriously I'm getting their emails from their email list. And I'm like, yeah. oh, that is the worst don't do that. Thing to do. Yeah. Um, and that's I don't know who's I don't know who's giving you the advice. I know it's not us, but 
but some of the some of the bad advice that people get on on how to be an author on social media is is kind of ridiculous and and it's 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 one extreme or the next they either they either um they either uh tried that method or they go they 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 latch on to an author that has obviously got a really good hold on social media and then they try to be that author Mm. in that weird single white female stalker kind of vibe (laughs) it just it just doesn't work it's like no you're not chuck windig you can't you you know that that there there's a reason why chuck windig is chuck windig it's the same thing with with pip and myself Pip's blog is a very different different voice from my blog when we blog, uh, and when we get to the shared desk, it's it's really where you see, you see the meeting of both minds, and you see that that yeah, Pip is Pip is the sane one, Pip is the rational one. I am not, and and you know, if you've ever you seen that authentic self, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. What are some other don'ts? that we should be doing. Uh, Josh Hayes, he says, adds author as friend, immediately sends group invite. No. (laughs) Don't do that. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, that's another another big problem. That's another big problem. Um, I would say... I'm trying to think of of some of the... um, I I know that we're uh, we're people... I mean, we're in a... The steampunk community is fairly niche, and I've seen some authors, like, take images from um cosplayers or photographers and at, if they have any watermark cut it out and just put their mm. own stuff on there and then that especially if you're writing in a, in a small um subset of of a, of a genre that can really put the back up of any um any group of people um, you won't get invited to the steampunk events, for yeah. example, and you will draw the ire of other steampunk writers as well. So don't expect to work with any of them. Um, uh, another one, another one would be um, when people do use stock photography or stock video, if they're putting together either um, either a digital ad or if they're feeling really ambitious uh, doing a book trailer. Uh, one of the things they try to do is they try to use the um, uh, the free stock art sample, which mm. will have like a watermark of that production company or that particular service. Like you'll see it's a deposit photos across an image. And then they put text on top of it to try to cover it up. Um, not only is that incredibly cheap, that's still against uh, that's still against terms of service in yeah. using yeah. any kind of stock Im- image or media. And it also just looks, it looks bad. It looks bad. So the reason you know. there's watermarks on it, <laughs> right, right, and and you know people go, well, it's there for it's there for free. No, it's there as a sample, mm-hmm. and and it doesn't work that way. And if you read, you know, the terms of service, that thing that you tend to skip over when you when you join Facebook or Twitter or, or Twitch or any of those things, they make these things very clear. And yeah, maybe you can get a maybe it's easy to get away with, but again, it's not professional. Mm. And, and you know, um, <clears throat> yeah, try and be professional in, in everything you do, and, and social yeah. media is no different to right. that. You know? Right. People now that all, we also do, we also do say that just because you get onto social media, it doesn't mean that everybody's going to be your friend. Mm. Um, we do talk about dealing with trolls. We do talk about dealing with um, negative uh, reviews. Negative, negative reviews. Comments. Yeah, yeah. Um, it you know the the what you know if someone negatively. Um, comments about your book, then you know it's like okay, well you know at least you at least you read it, and I appreciate that. Thank you very much, and that's being a professional. Um, you don't tell them that they're wrong. You just you don't tell, tell them. your fans to go after them. We've seen that as well. You We've know seen that as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, you also you, you you keep a decorum. Now, uh, just because you have fans, you know, just because you have fans on on on. Uh, on, on, on a platform that does not necessarily mean too that they own you mm. you know you have to decide where your boundaries are in social media um case in point i had a um i had a fan and i'm going to use that that term in big quotes um and they found out that uh as pip and i are celebrating uh events of last week um 
he came in and made uh and and, and made a comment that that they knew this this fan knew was going completely against my politics, completely against my beliefs, and completely against my um, my own feelings about research and being and misinformation, and how and how how much that rubs against me. Mm. And I I did not hesitate. I came at them with both barrels, and I told them to f off. And um, they sent some nasty grams to me as well. And then they said, "You just lost a sub," and mm. to which that I I um. I did cry in my sleep. Of course, I was also having a celebratory beer at the time. So I kind of washed away those tears. It was okay. The, the point I'm getting at is, is, that, is that that fan thought for some reason because they were supporting me and they were supporting my works. And they were supporting um, my, my stream. They were entitled to some sort of ownership. And I'm like, no, I treat my social media platforms like it's my house. And if you come into my house and you start propping your feet up on the furniture and kicking the cat, I'm going to ask you to leave and yeah. not the best way. So, you know, that, that is part of, that's part of ownership of social media, but these are boundaries that I have set for myself. These may not be the boundaries that everybody else sets, but you yeah, do. Some, some, authors, some authors dive head first into the political sphere, for example, yeah. they start swimming and they should expect to, you know, get um, trolls and blowback and all sorts of that. Whereas some authors, it's a personal choice and they're just like, I'm just going to remain apolitical. No one's going to know what my particular thoughts on anything are. So mm -hmm. it's it's a choice that you have to make for yourself, right. um, fully aware of the consequences of both. Because also some people can come after you for being apolitical. You know, what, what are you thinking? You should have a stand. Or boring. So, or boring. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. You know. So I, I really like this idea of, it's not really this idea of the, I can't think of the word for it right now, but you know, you have your personal profile on Facebook, for example, and right. you're inviting all these authors because they're like-minded to you. You know, they they think the way you do. That's where you want your friends and family, but that's not where your business is. You know, that's right. where like the pages come from and the personal, you know, groups for that series or just like you know, um, Josh has you know the Josh hates thing, and you know all the authors have their thing. And, you know, that's where you get the fans. And, you know, if you are an author that is really political, you know, and that's on your personal Facebook page, but that's not where your fans are, mm -hmm. that's one thing. That's a choice. So long right. as you're, as far as what I'm hearing, you're giving that love to these other areas, meeting your fans where they are, and really being aware of the difference of mm -hmm. what you're portraying. Because yeah. just like T was saying, like, this is your business. This is your, your business is your house because... Yeah, but we do that in the min we have a uh, we have a Ministry of Peculiar Occurrences Facebook page and a group, um, uh, but and on that you won't find anything political. We try and keep it light. It's a fun right. steampunk romp. It really wouldn't set in with the tone. Maybe if you're writing a political thriller, it might be okay to post pol politics on that side there. But yeah, we t we tend to delineate. And the nice thing about, of course, if you have your profile, you can also set it to not go out publicly. You know, you can just have it amongst your friends or a select group of friends that you, you know, know and trust. So, yeah, I, I we prefer to keep some distance. Sounds like it's about knowing what tribe you're trying to build around your books. Yeah. Um, yeah. On the one hand, bringing up certain topics might alienate certain readers, right. or, you know, depending on where you're coming from. But on the other hand, um, maybe that's exactly like maybe politics or religion is exactly the topic you do want to be open and genuine about because maybe that gets them fired up and excited too and that's a way of connecting so it mm. could depend on on the audience but um, Papa Jack he's often on the show and he likes to say people might not remember what you say but they'll always remember how you made them feel and definitely politics is one of those areas where you could you know transgress someone's feelings or by being open about your opinion you might and this is what we hope to do on this show is we hope to bring people together even if we're not i mean if we don't agree we can still talk and we can still be friends and we can still learn from each other and i just right. love that idea of differences of opinion you can't have that if we all have the same opinion yeah it's a ma it's a matter of it's a matter of civility it is mm. a matter of discussion it is a matter of of comfort level um, but what we have seen it 
in especially and the, this is the part in social media um people tend to get very um it gets tougher and tougher to manage it gets tougher and tougher to manage because that uh, and and this this is true i mean i uh, i'm i'm a communications professional i've written uh this book with my wife i've written other books uh about communications on social platforms uh for for the for dummies people and the the thing that that i that i i've said repeatedly about social media is that it's it's greatest strength is also its greatest weakness um <clears throat> It brings people together. I have met so many incredible people through streaming, through podcasting, through um, through through the network themselves. I think it's great. I think mm. I think it's absolutely fantastic. I'm a I'm a very social gregarious guy, so I, I love that. But there's another part of there's another part of social media where the term friend has been devalued over time. Mm. Well, we're friends on Facebook. Well, that's nice, but I mean, <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, but I mean, what does that mean? And you know, I n and you know, if you had told me, if you had said to me, like, like you know, back in my high school days, well, I'm going to unfriend you. I'm like, what the hell does that mean? I mean, how do you unfriend somebody? But this is the this is the world we are in now, where you can unfriend people, and and uh, and I've actually heard authors go, well, I, I can't do that, and I'm like, why? And they're like, well, you know, that's that's my business. No, no, that is not your business. Your business is to tell a great story and to, and to, and to read books. And while that person may be somebody that that is buying your books, that's great. But there is no obligation for you to be their friend on Facebook. You can unfriend them. Hell, you can go in ahead and block them if you want. <laughs> and and um, and you know the. Well, the thing about polarizing, uh, polarizing topics, again, this goes into, well, is this what you feel comfortable talking about? Mm -hmm. um, I, when I first got on to streaming, uh, streaming media, I was very, I was a little worried about it. I was a little worried about talking about polarizing uh, topics. But then there was a friend of mine that I've, I, I've partnered up with over the years. Uh, he, is, um, he plays video games, but he's also blind. He is legally blind. Well, on our, on, our, on our platform, we talk about accessibility in video games. And I was stunned to find out how polarizing that topic was. I'm like, <laughs> wait, you mean to tell me there are people who are against blind people playing video games? And the attitude is, well, yeah, maybe they shouldn't play that game. Maybe it's out of their league. And I'm like, well, then you're kind of a prick, aren't you? And that, <laughs> like, that just sort of, you know, ignites the fire. I, I, think, I think it does, isn't just politics. I mean, I think these days, you know, if you have an opinion, there's always going to be someone that has a contrary uh, opinion and might be quite, like, angry about it. You, you just mm. don't know. I have seen Pip on panels mm. where she has been shut out just because her plumbing is different from the other of the members <laughs> of the panel. And I'm sitting there stewing in the audience going, say something pip and she just waits and then when she gets off the uh, off she says we're going to the bar and, <laughs> and then we we vent and we and then when when that event calls us and says we'd love for you to come back it's like that's great but we're taking a different we're taking a different road well, i have to, to in my own defense i have to say that people from new zealand are generally more of a passive aggressive people um which the makes them terrifying. We go, like, we go to a restaurant. I always loved this when I first came to America, sidebar, um, that when something was wrong in a restaurant, an American will tell the person that there's something wrong with their steak. New Zealanders don't say a word. They leave the restaurant and then they tell like 30 friends, don't go to that place. <laughs> that's, um, that's good. But I have been here for 10 years and I am learning a little, a little better about that sort of thing. But I mean, and I, and I think this translates into social media as well, because on that panel, and I find I'm going to go here. Um, yeah, you are. For women, for women particularly, it's a tricky line to toe because if you say something, well, you're you know the angry person who just you know the, the feminazi or whatever. Um, and, and if you don't say anything, then they steamroll over you. And I think that is um, also in social media. I think women have a harder time with uh, trolls and, and commenters and people like that. It's, it's just inbuilt. It doesn't matter whether you're on social media or in real life. Yeah. I'm, I'm sensing this, this great tie in to like everything we're talking about when it comes to social media, 
you know, what part of social media is your home? Who are you going to invite into your home? Meet right. your kids, see your dog, check out your backyard. I mean, I'm sure not going to have a thousand random fans of my writing in my personal home. Nothing against y'all, but yeah. I don't know you, but I'm so glad you enjoy my stories. Here's right. my fan page yeah. and my fan group, mm -hmm. but not my home. Um, so really understanding that there is a difference and mm -hmm. it's okay that there is a difference and it's okay that you separate the two. Um, but I, think, I, I think a lot of this comes from the fact that when, when social media first started, it was all about sharing, 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 mm -hmm. sharing. Mm -hmm. so and you so, had in my mind, my thoughts there, T. I was, thinking and, of, I was just about to say that. <laughs> and, and, and on top of all that, you had these social media gurus that um <laughs> that, which is. yeah exactly that 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 latched on to this and they 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 peddled this and the funny thing was that at the height of the social media gurus i was actually hired by a data protection company to come in and say educate us about social media and so i not only learned about uh social media i not only taught them about social media and you know how much was really reliant on the individual but they learned that social media was not this was was not this evil evil presence uh, that you know that, that that was that was that was out to hack everything in your in in your personal life. But then the third thing was that I found out I looked I was now looking at social media from a cybersecurity perspective. Mm. And when you look at social media from a cybersecurity perspective, it's a very different playing field. And while I sound like I may be negative about social media, I still love doing it. I still love connecting with people. It, but it, it, it really comes back. But the reason I feel like I, I have not gone running away from social media, uh, you know, screaming my head off in, in, in some insane, uh, insane breakdown is because I have made those boundaries around me. Yeah. And, yeah. and, yeah. and, and when I don't it started off to, it was definitely like, Hey, let's share everything. Oh, yeah. 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 Here's yeah. my pajamas. Here's all of this. And I mean, I think, you know, everyone was totally unaware of, of the, consequences of that and i think yeah. as social yeah. media has matured it's definitely become more about boundaries and, and setting them and and expectations and knowing that there are risks and challenges that maybe you didn't know when social media sort of first started like coming about so social media it kind of runs on this idea of opening up your house opening up your private life to the to the internet you know, if you're a writer, maybe letting your sharing about your writing process, sharing about what inspires you. Instagram is about taking pictures of your life. Twitch is about, you know, streaming whatever you're doing right now, like what, you know, we're streaming right now. So we're, we're doing that. But you can't keep that forever. You could pick up, you could pick up scammers, you could pick up stalkers, you could pick up trolls. Um, it could be distracting you from your writing because you have all of your attention out here. Yes. What What are some boundaries that you can set up for an author uh, that would help them to do enough to connect with fans, but also to maintain their sanity and their balance? Well, the, the, always the important thing with the writer is uh, time, how much time you have to write. Right. So yes, yeah, social media can just gobble up your time yeah. like Pac-Man. Um, so I th in the book, we talk about setting up a social media calendar. So maybe choose um, three or four platforms where you know your audience is and then decide how you're going to manage that on a weekly basis. Like maybe on mm. uh, Mondays, I'm going to do a bit of Instagram. I'm going to take a picture. Um, maybe on uh, Thursday, I'm going to make sure that I post to my group, my, my fan group, um, so that you have some... Uh, boundaries as on your time as well as your personal space um and also there are a bunch of different um tools online that you can use um to schedule things ahead of time so maybe you're like oh, i've got 30 minutes on half an hour on a sunday where i can do my social media platforming and i'm going to set it all up to go on during the week um and that sort of helps just make sure that you do still have some time for your writing because that's the most important thing. And um, to dovetail off that with, with, um, with social media, if all you're doing is promotion um, and you're not writing, if you're not producing, 
uh, new words, that's a problem. And then you have to scale back and go, okay, what am, what am I doing wrong here? Um, that was one of the reasons why I had to scale back some of my podcasting. Uh, because I, at the time, when I was doing the, the Survival Guide to Writing Fantasy, I was doing so much talking about the business of writing. I wasn't actually writing anything new. I had a, I still managed to to produce a, a new title in, in that, that year, but there was there was a definite dry spell and i was like oh wait a minute and it wasn't that i was out of ideas i was out of time mm -hmm. so so that's one of the things that that you uh that you have to do is you've got to make sure that that you're in control of the social media and not vice versa um and then but but you know pip is absolutely right it it also it, it is a discipline it is a discipline and what I tend to do is I tend to um, put limits on 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 myself on on certain things I want to do. Like when I was when I was blogging on a regular basis, I said, "Okay, I'm going to aim for 500 to 1,000 words, but I really want to try to keep it as close to 500 as possible." Mm -hmm. And uh, as a writer, that's kind of tough. But what I learned about that was is that most of the most of the articles that I that I were uh, that I that that I, I was seeing uh, the, the best traffic for, really the sweet spot for blogging was between 500 to 750 words. Now, are there exceptions to that rule? Oh, absolutely. There was, a, there was a blog post that I put up once where I think I talked about the world's worst job interviews I ever went on. And that sucker was 3,000 words. <laughs> and people lost their minds over it. it you know, it got, it got traction. It got commentary. People loved it. So there, so but, so so you you are going to find that there are there are always exceptions. There 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 are no silver bullets. There are no fast and 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 tried and true ways. Social media strategy is very fluid, and it and it changes from person to person to person. And one of the things that 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 I that I myself have 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 worked with Pip in in refining is how much we share with other people. And how much we 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 keep close to the best, um, you know. Personally, there 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 are some there are some lines I know that I would never cross. Uh, I know that at um, I uh, two years ago I I, uh, I I attended an event called TwitchCon, and I saw an entirely different side to Twitch, which I thought was great. Uh, Twitch is a, a streaming platform, and I saw people actually streaming their vacations. <laughs> streaming their vacations. Whoa. And that's like Black Mirror. Kind yeah. Of <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, believe me, Black Mirror, I will tell you right now, Black Mirror is truly a, if you want to know every fear of mine in social media, it's uh -huh. all in Black Mirror. Yeah. It's in every episode of Black Mirror. But that's the, that is, Black Mirror is not, it, Black Mirror is truly the twilight zone of our generation. Because it, it, you know, you look at you look at uh, at, at episodes like Down Spiral, uh, the most popular. They're all com. The, this was stuff I was like, this is what scares me the most of social media, mm -hmm. and and I've seen I've seen people uh, just take it to a point of where it's almost like an addiction, and I'm like, y social media should not control you. You should be controlling your social media, and I think where people really get tripped up on that is analytics. Everybody mm -hmm. wants the analytics. They want they want the most likes. They want the most comments. They want this. And I'm sitting there going, if if all you're doing is producing content just so that people can tell you that they love you, you've got bigger issues on your plate than than what your what your next Instagram but, post. Well, the is. funny thing is that publishing has. I mean, at the beginning of my publishing career, they didn't know a lot about social media. Yeah. Now yeah. they're like, okay, how many email subscribers do you have? How many Instagram followers do you have? Um, what's your platform? What's what is your, what platform? Is your platform? I mean, uh, I feel awful for young writers who are just getting their books up or, or trying to sell their book because what's your platform is a tricky question when you haven't got a book to sell yet, but you're trying to sell a book. It's sort of like, it's <laughs> like eating itself, you know. It, it really is. Story. It really is. And this uh, and 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 it's it's frustrating. It 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 is it is incredibly frustrating. But again, um, if you have a plan, and ha and that's something we do talk about, having a mm -hmm. plan with your social media 
is absolutely is, is absolutely essential. Yeah, um, decide what and, you're going to be actually. Right. You know, um, we we talk about content marketing, like um, on our uh, Facebook page for the ministry. We have you know buy our book posts, but they're not every day, and we supplement it with, hey, here's some cool stuff. You know, some you know some authors, other authors. Here's some cosplayers. Here's some cool events that are happening when events happen again. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you're not only providing content, you're also kind of creating a goodwill um, community around your book as well, you know, yeah. sharing with other people. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. You want to use this as a tool, but the tool is made to addict people. And that includes you. Yeah. So yeah. you're you're you need to keep up your focus and your attention to be creative in the first place and, right. and to create. Then on the other hand, you know, we we love our readers, we love our friends. We don't want to necessarily participate in something that could be damaging to their psyche too either. Right. So right. that's that's where I can see coming up with a plan, like figuring out why am I here, what's my goal. How am I going to accomplish that goal without becoming a tool myself? Yeah. 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 It's, it, 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 is, it is a very tricky road to navigate. Does that mean that we regret navigating this road? No, not, not, in, the, not in the least. I mean, I, I, love all the, I love all the new toys that people are coming out for podcasters. I love, I love the process of podcasting. I love how just stumbling into streaming as I've done, I suddenly am like, oh, wait a minute this is perfect for the workflow of podcasting. And now I'm seeing a lot of podcasters adopt streaming as, as, as a new way of getting into um, getting a new workflow in. Uh, I know for a fact it has completely changed the way we approach the shared desk. Um, and I remember, I do remember, I do remember when, when I first pitched it to Pip and she was like, I don't know if we should do that. Next 10 minutes into our first stream, she is already like busting my chops. And I'm like, yeah, she's going to fit in just fine. <laughs> and, and it really has added a, a new dynamic because now you have a, you have a live audience. You have the ability of, of interaction like, like you did with the, uh, with the call out bubble that I saw from, from YouTube. I mean, stuff like that is ingenious. And this was stuff that in 2005, we dreamt about in podcasting and, and, Staying, you know, staying on top of the uh, of what platforms will work for you, and mm. just because Twitch works for us doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Maybe you've decided, ah, you know what? I think I'm gonna, I think I'm just going to stick with the big three. Then stick with the big three. You know, it's it's where you feel the most comfortable because if you're doing, if you're doing social media, just for the sake of doing social media, people will catch on to that. It's like when people, it's like it to tie it back to writing. It's like when people are, are in a series and the author has burned out on the series like like decades ago, but they are still cranking out the same shtick. And then they're like, you know what? I'm just not enjoying this. Um, so what do they do? They end the series or they or they say they say that they negotiate with their publisher. I am ending the series now, you know, um, because people can read and figure out when when an author has in fact checked out and it's the same thing in social media so to, josh hayes uh, oh. another host uh, go ahead keely no nope, you can do that first i was gonna segue. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah we want to get to that segue too he said he's started to do writing streams too just like you guys and it's been pretty fun and motivating mm -hmm. yeah it is we have, I, I was kind of surprised about writing streams i i was Slightly skeptical about the shared desk, but then when she said writing streams, I was like, mm -hmm, even worse. But so was I, but so was I. I'm yeah. the first person to say that. But and it then, is really cool to get that. Um, I mean, we put our heads down for a bit and we write for a bit, but then we stop, you know, take a break, have a wee chat, talk about what we're doing, and then get might back. Even, and might even read the stuff that we've been working on. We do have some music going so that it's not just dead air of us. Yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but yeah, but it's also, and it's also a bit of an accountability thing too. Yeah. Um, we actually started the writing streams because I said, you know what, let's do a writing stream in solidarity for people who are doing NaNoWriMo. And that's how it started. And then the next thing we knew, we were like, that was actually kind of fun. And, <laughs> but it was actually keeping us accountable for, for writing, for writing, writing stuff. And, um, you know, and it, 
it, you can't like go, oh, I've only done 500 words, I'm done, when there are people like watching you. Watching. Going, hey, yeah. Like you did yeah. There. yeah. <laughs> All right. So real quick, um, a lot of what we're talking about can be found in one very particular book. And if any of our viewers, listeners out there are thinking, man, I really want to know more of this thing that you keep like hinting at, well, this might just be for you. Today's spotlight is on social media writers, marketing strategies for building your audience and selling your book. By Kaylee Wood. Oh, you're am I being providing... Me? Damn it. Yeah, you're... Am I done? Am I done the, 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 the joy of the joy of working live. Uh, we might you might have to you might have to back up and start that over again. Okay. Am I am I solid? Am I solid? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Marketing strategies for building your audience and selling your book by T. Morris and Pip Valentine. I hope I said that right. Yes, you did. All new edition featuring chapters on streaming media and crisis management. Maximize the potential of your online brand. Social media has transformed into a necessity for writers. This second edition offers something for both authors, new to social space, and experienced ones looking for fresh approaches to platforms old and new. The variety of social media options alone is dizzying. WordPress, Tumblr, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Pinterest, and more. Social Media for Writers Second Edition will equip you with the essential tools you'll need to succeed. In this book, you'll learn how to create an online brand, write content for several different networks, and tie them together to develop an authoritative, trusted voice. Utilize best practices, learn the ins and outs of the online community and how to maximize the potential for of each platform. Build a community. Make connections and create a fan base to endorse your work. Refine your voice and online persona through platforms like podcasting and streaming media. With all of these strategies, techniques, and applicable information, Social Media for Writers is a comprehensive source for all your social media needs. Click now, buy it, <laughs> or face social media. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. I really need uh, to stop this roboticizing. It's driving me crazy. <laughs> well, actually, the book grew. The second edition became larger than the first edition. Um, so. We we cut a lot. We cut a lot from the from the second uh, from the first edition. But one of the things that we did actually come up with with the second edition, which was um, we we were we were kind of writing in writing in our uh, out of our comfort zone, but it was something that I felt like we needed to to discuss, which was crisis management. Mm -hmm. It was something that because we have seen writers a few crises. Oh my crazy. God, we have it's crazy. We have <laughs> we we we've seen writers just stumble through things that could have just been resolved really simply, and and I mean, wow, uh, just man, uh, if there was if there was ever if there was ever a need for a chapter on crisis management, I'm like, this is it, hun. And we 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 were we were, we went very gently into that good night, but I think we did give people good advice on if things go pear shaped, this is what you need to do, you know. Mm. And um, yeah. So so and we're, and we're very proud of the of the new book, and uh, we hope that you uh, we hope that you pick it up either through us if you pick it up directly through us, um, either. At my website, which is tmorris.com, or uh, Pip at your website, which is jvalentine.com. If you if you pick up any of our books through our websites, uh, we will sign them for you. And oh. and yeah, that that that's the no thing. Way. But but Amazon, Amazon is the Amazon. We 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 love the Zon. Uh, feel free <laughs> to pick it up from there as well if you like. So, what are some of those uh, events that can happen that could make an author's career go pear shaped? <laughs> so many so many um so i many. i mean some of them are entertaining but some of them are so painful uh authors having beef with other authors that really goes badly pretty quickly uh especially when they've got uh fan bases and then the fan bases start attacking yeah, they, they get involved yeah oh. um, uh, responding well, I, mean, I mean yeah responding to comments is a minefield um especially if you maybe you don't know who you're commenting to on twitter 
and then you find out, oh, they're an expert in the field or they're another author or so, yes. Those I'm, are I'm, things. Yeah, uh, that's, that. yeah. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think of some off the top of my head. Um, so at least with what Pip was saying, you know, be careful what you post you're commenting on other things yes. you know picking fights like really think about is this something that is good for my brand yeah is this I something think, that yeah, yeah. I, think I mean, it's, it's, I mean it's, people there, fight there's, the yeah there, there's a there's a lot that can go wrong with social media and i would say one of the um I, I will say this. Um, one thing that that you might not want to do, or may not may not want to bother doing, is deleting whatever content it is that you think is is, is, is complete. I mean, ask 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 any domestic terrorist that tried to storm the Capitol building only a few weeks ago. Please Just deleting me. deleting your deleting the video of or the or the picture of you. Flashing the peace sign in front of the broken window of the Capitol building going YOLO that deleting that's that. Is not, yeah, that's forever. <laughs> that is forever. It doesn't matter if it's been up for five seconds or five minutes or five days. People are going to find it. People are going to take screen caps of it. And, uh, and it's, it's, it's just not a good, it's just not a good look. Um, I mean, it, I, I I would also say too that that when it comes to um, when it comes to to to, to getting into uh, into sticky situations, the the best thing to do is just to say you know what I'm walking away from social media, yeah. I'm just walking away from it, and there's nothing wrong. I, I, with it. I can think of an actual situation, T, okay. that, that you and okay. I have had um, where people ask our opinion about other steampunk authors. Yeah. And they're definitely angling for you to say something juicy. Yeah. Like, oh, well, this yeah. person sucks. Or this person yeah. doesn't know yeah. what they're doing. Uh, um, and, and to that... Home you know, don't play that. <laughs> you're like, never, never comment on... That's one of our things is to... Ne we don't even really... And I found a lot of a lot of other authors do this as well. We don't review other authors' books. Yeah, we stopped doing um, that. That's just... We stopped doing that. Uh, that's just a minefield, you know, if anyone discovers... Even if you think you're being clever and maybe you've got, like, another name, another yeah. pseudonym that you're using to review somebody else's author... Or, uh, another author's books and put them down, that'll come out eventually and then you'll be in a whole world of hurt. Yeah. So so knowing your tribe, knowing the that you're trying to build, um, also being... Uh, polite about other authors and being, you know, careful with your words because everything that on, goes on the internet is forever. Um, and the mob but I is think, out there. And I <laughs> want to say, Kayleen, actually, um, I'm pronouncing that right. Correct, Kayleen? Yes. Um, <laughs> um, I, I would say that that is the, we, we, we do mention this in the, um, uh, in, in the crisis management chapters is the best thing you can do in social media, it, it goes back to, to one of the first lessons I ever learned in a martial arts class. My my instructor said to me, the best way to block a punch, don't be there. Mm. And and before you you hit send, before you hit that that send button, take one minute, take one minute and go, all right, I'm about to walk into a room with a bullhorn. And I'm about to say this, am I okay with it? And that's something that, that, um, <clears throat> it's something that you got to stand behind. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, a good, a good, a, a good example of this, um, is, uh, and we do cite, we do cite examples in, in, in the book from other, other authors, you know, you know, doing good things and getting things right is, uh, is New York times bestseller Chuck Wendig. He, um, uh, he, he has, he has won the hearts of people with not only his writing, his exceptional writing, but also with his exceptional candor online. It has also kicked up a lot of uh, a lot of pushback, and he's he's talking about it. he's like, he's like I need to find a balance, and I'm 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 beginning to question the, the I mean Chuck Chuck wrote the forward, so so he wrote the forward to our book. He knows that that social media has a place social media has a place in the in the author's um in the author's canon but social media also 
has to stay within your control. If you lose control of that, the, the easiest way to getting it back is to just take a step back and reevaluate all these different platforms you're on and go, what do I need? What do I not need? Mm. I have seen a lot of authors, especially, I don't know, maybe it's just the pandemic, but there have been some people who I know who have said, you know what, I'm going to take a social media break for a week or a yeah. month even. And that's okay because you've got to look after yourself. You're just a, you're a person as well as a writer and, and a business person. Um, and that's okay if you need to take a break from mental health and to be kind to yourself. Um, and then maybe when you come back, reevaluate how many places you are in social media and how you're going to handle it. So it, it is a double-edged sword. It's just some place. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. I can't tell you how many times um, I see a post, I read the post. I have an opinion. I type my opinion. I even edit my opinion. I reread my opinion. And then I stare at the post and then I delete it. Yeah, It never gets posted, but yeah. it's enough for me that I at least work through my thought process on it. And then yeah. if I feel the need, I will go and contact that person personally if they made a post on something. Like there was a situation yeah. where Lauren had made a post on um, a topic that I wasn't comfortable spewing all of my thoughts to the necessary of everywhere. And I was just like, hey, I really, I saw your post. It struck me here are my thoughts. And then we had like a 20, 30 minute conversation about it. And mm -hmm. that to me was more powerful than blasting that opinion randomly right. for 10,000 million people to see and come at me, bro. You yeah. know, and I didn't want to come at me, bro. I just right. wanted- You just you wanted know, a conversation with Laura, right? Yeah. There are, and, yeah. Yeah, there are topics. And, and I know Pip and I have said this before on, on the shared desk. It's like, there are topics we are okay and open with talking about. Uh, on our show and on other people's shows. There are other topics that we keep in our back pocket. And we will say on those other shows or on our own show, if you want us, if you want to hear a different thought process on this topic, because we feel like we're trying to navigate this very touchy subject, feel free to find us at a con and ask us, just ask us. Yeah. Um, I think, when you're, I think when you're posting like, um, you know, what is your goal? I mean, well, if you had that opinion yeah. to put out, I, I, I like that you were like, okay, my, my goal is to talk to Lauren about it yeah. so nobody else needs to know. So if you're, if you're just posting off the hip, you know, it's just firing off the top of your head, take a breath and a moment and think, do I, could, I, could this just be a, a phone call or a DM or a private message? And 90% of the time, man, every single comment that I start typing up, I'm just like, hmm. I'll just contact the person. Is, is this yeah. a hill I want to die on? Is this a yeah. hill I want to die on? That's true. Yeah. Yep. 98% of the time, no. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Precisely. All right. Do we have, is there any last questions you're just itching to get to, Lauren? What was like your top one that you <laughs> well, really wanted to hit? I, I do know that. Uh, a, there's a lot of social media platforms that are popping up that are new. Oh yeah, um, yeah. And some of them, uh, some of them are small. Some of them are gaining traction fast. Some of them are um, disappearing. But are there any that are outside of uh, the big three that you think might be the future of social media, or that an author should at least take a look in in 2021? So oh, we did cover Discord. Yeah, um, I was just going to say Discord. Uh, we. Um, we actually have a, a um, um, we have a chapter uh, that's you know the 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 you know the the underground platforms. I can't remember exactly what we. I call think we them. call it the small the the. the, the they, they were they were platforms. The options. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were, they were, these were platforms. It's like, hey, look, if you if you want to make some time and explore this, feel free. Um, and we talked uh, we talked at length about Discord. Um, we mentioned, of, untapped. <laughs> we mentioned untapped, uh, which was a uh, um, which is a a, a um, it's a mobile app and it's a social media platform for beer lovers. And there are there are other, um, but if you're not into beer, that's okay. You got Vivino, uh, that's for wine for for wine wine drinkers. Um, untapped also covers those ciders and meads. If you want to get if you want to get really <laughs> strangely, we find a lot of writers on those. We found we found a lot of. I mean, I have had more back and forths with Elizabeth Bear 
on untapped than <laughs> any other platform. Um, and so, but, but discord I think is, is, is the up and coming. Uh, and, and when you talk to people in, in geek circles, they go, Oh wait, that's the thing. That's something for gamers. Yes, it was, it was, but now you're seeing discord start to become more and more mainstream. Mm. And what you can do with it, the, the way the way someone described it to me, it's Facebook without the noise. And that is a great way to great way to describe you, it. You can you can create servers for different topics. Yeah. Um, and that, which is also a nice way of keeping the boundaries around. Things. Right. Hey, you want to see pictures of my cat? Join this server. If we right. want to talk about writing inspiration, this is the server. You know? Yeah. It's got a lot and, of and, um, and, yeah. You have, you have you you create a server. You have channels within the server, and the different channels are, are very hyper focused on exactly what you want to talk about. Mm. Which means that if you want to have a place where where you want your community to talk, but politics is off the board, then you don't have a channel for politics. Um, you 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 really have a lot of control. Uh, you can even have control over what rooms what what channels people can and can't access and it's 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 been it, it was really fun to write discord for dummies because i learned so much about this application and i was like wow this is way beyond just gaming um but a lot but, of people i mean during the pandemic a lot of people have trying to find ways to connect with people regularly and discord's yeah. great um, we do role playing, um, our role playing group gathers on discord um right our writer, we have a writing, um, <laughs> we have a, a writing retreat that we go to every year, which we finished at the end of February last year. Yeah, uh, we, we, yeah, it was the we last. Just got it, it in, but it was oh, the man. last. It was the last time we were around like people. a large group of people. <laughs> wow! But um, and, we're, we're yeah. now gathering on Discord as sort of a way to get over the fact we're not doing it this year. Right. Yeah, and. Uh, so, so, so I would say Discord is, is the platform to watch and the platform to really invest in. Um, but again, I, I, I think the other thing too, um, and, I, and I, 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 I would not be surprised if this is one of the more politically charged episodes of, of Keystroke Medium. Uh, but one of the things I was going to say was, is that what we saw two weeks ago in, in DC is a, is a perfect example of the, the advice that we give writers and just people in general about social media, just because it's happening, just because you're a part of it, does not necessarily mean you should share it. Um, I mean, the, the fact that there were people literally streaming, they were streaming from their phones as they were storming the Capitol. At one point, at what point did the brain go, this is really not a good idea. <laughs> But of course, maybe we could have sold them social media but for the us. analytics. <laughs> were killer. We I it. mean, it was all about the likes and the shares, brah. It's like, no, that's no. called, you know, what you think is great content is then called, is called physical evidence in your court hearing. So mm -hmm. maybe there are some things that you should keep close to the vest. Maybe there are some things that you shouldn't share on social media. And that's okay. There are no laws that tell you. Um, well, there are there have actually been writers who've taken other writers to court because somebody some writer said something about them on right on social media. And again, but right. and and the thing, but the thing is that is that also applies. Libel and slander do apply. This was something I know Lauren was really excited about. We actually at our last shared desk, mm -hmm. we had a um, we had we had a, a lawyer come on to talk about the First Amendment and writing because. People were using that as a as a hot button for an individual who basically lost a, a book contract, and he was saying, "My First Amendment right is being is being repressed." And and then and then when um, when people started getting kicked off of off of social media platforms for misinformation and for uh, and for radical radical thoughts, people were just like, "My." My my voice, you know, my First Amendment rights are no. Your your First Amendment rights are are perfectly fine. They They're, made the foreigner read the First Amendment. Yeah, <laughs> we, we we made the foreigner uh, over here. Over, yeah, over there. No, wait, wait. There, oh, there. 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 Right now. We made the weird. foreigner. Yeah, I know. We made the foreigner read the First Amendment, and even she was like. Cong 
Congress. It's the first word, Congress. And I'm like, you know, hearing that in a New Zealand accent, is, <laughs> it's kind of hot. But again, it's about terms of service. At any time, these platforms, and this is this is the thing that I say in my in my in, in, in the workshops that Pip and I will, will will do with writers. We tell writers your your rights are not being violated. At any time, these platforms can decide we are changing the rules or we have had enough of your BS. And if people take umbrage with that, I would be like, well, then here's 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 the thing. Go and get your money back for the membership that you paid. Oh, that's right. You didn't pay a cent for any of these things. And that's the thing. This stuff is not for free. You know, the, the, and, and I'm sorry, the, the, the services are for free, but they at any time can say, we're done with you. Yeah. And that and is what the wants to be deplatformed. Right. right. <laughs> you really don't. You really don't. You know, think, think of it like this there's a public park and everyone is welcome. Right. However, if you choose to take off all your clothes and go running through the park, you are going to be arrested and you will no longer be welcome. That's a great park. analogy. That's a great <laughs> analogy. Don't go streaking through the platforms. Right. right. That's good advice for writers. <laughs> Unless it's OnlyFans. If it's OnlyFans, on social media. If you got an OnlyFans where you're streaking through parks, you know, that's that different. That could be right, but then that comes back to knowing what you're bringing to exactly. what table on the media. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I feel you. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. Oh my gosh. We could probably keep going with this for a long time and we're just barely scratching the surface on it. But I'm definitely going to check out this social media because, uh, for writers because honestly, social media navigation for me has been like, you know, I might as well be reading a Chinese book that was, you know, translated into French and then retranslated into a, like Italian or something. Using um, Google Translate. Yeah, that. And then yeah. use Google Translate. I might as well yeah. be doing that. All right. Um, but thank you so much, you guys, for coming on and sharing your wisdom and hanging out, chatting with us. Um, can you tell us again what those websites were where people can find you, your work? I know it was T. It's T. Morris. Yeah. Com, and then you do mine, T. Yeah. Oh, PJBalentine.com. <laughs> there you go. I, the nice thing is, is as we as we mentioned in, in, in putting together a blog, um, when people go to uh, either of those websites, they will have links to all the different social media platforms that, that we're on. So and you can social find, media books and, and all the social media books. <laughs> and so so we, we try to we try to make it that our websites are, are like hubs. They're hubs to find us elsewhere in the world. So you can do that. Ooh, actually, you saying that. Just reminded me, uh, Patricia Gilliam did have a question earlier. How much oh. do you focus on your main website relative? Oops, sorry, Lauren. I just get to, relative to your social platforms, you're literally tying them together. You're making them yes. work in conjunction. Yeah, yeah, they should be. I mean, yeah. if if um, that's a yeah, great question they, too. They, they, they feed into each other. Um, yeah. So you're, definitely, your website should be. Even if you're not blogging, if you, even if you've just got you know about me and all of that sort yeah. of stuff you should have your social medias uh front and center so people can easily find you and follow you and keep more up to date with you if they if they want to and um, and, and I, I'm, I'm sure an argument will come up it's like well why don't i just do instead the link tree or or something like that now if you don't know what that is a link tree is a <laughs> uh, and it, we, honey we mentioned in the book don't worry i know uh, yeah uh link tree is one of those uh services where you pay like five six bucks a month and they will maintain for you this, um, it, you know, it's, 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 it's mobile friendly. It's, it's, you know, you, you can find it all the, on, on, uh, on websites. You can find it. Uh, you'll, you'll see people drop it in their Instagram as their bios. And what a link tree is that you click on the link and every link that you could possibly think of your YouTube, your, 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 your Twitter, your Twitch, all these different places are all listed on this one convenient page. That's great, but that's not really, um, that that is not a replacement for a website. And the website should be the hub, uh, the, the hub where you're pointing people to. If people wanna know where to find my books, I point them to tmorris.com. And, and, 
and people go there. And then they, you know, and when they go there, the first thing they see is, oh, Podcasting for Dummies, the fourth edition is out. And there are there are books underneath that are related to Podcasting for Dummies. And all those links go to my go to my shop. And then there's the blog if they want to if they want to see if I've if I've started pick up blogging again or not. <clears throat> but they can also they also have all the links to all the different places online where they can find me. And so the, the difference between something like Linktree and something like a blog is that a blog keeps people engaged. It's not just random links. It's, it's links, but it's a, a blog is links. Yes, but it's also your thoughts. Uh, it's your, it's your, your, your in the moment. And it's also a place where you can sell your books and that, that is essential. You know, I have to say um, that is on the nose. If I were to click on something, be like, ooh, find out more about this offer. And it's a giant web page of blue links. I'm like, back away, back away, back away. Like, unless I'm super just like, I need to find this one thing. But if I just want to like explore, figure out more about, man, don't hit me with a block of text of links. <laughs> <laughs> that's me personally. That's that's just me. Yeah, I mean, the, and the other the other thing I tell people is is um, you know when I get around to, uh, to 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 updating the photographs and things like that, when you get to the about me page, you actually see uh, you know pictures of me from my theater days, when I was you know doing the Ren Fair circuit and when I was doing period pieces and things like that, and and yeah, um, I can always tell that that, that there there's the hardcore fan, because they they uh, they meet me and then they go. So I saw that headshot. How old is that headshot? And I go, oh, yeah, that's 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 classic T. Morris right there. That's you know that that's that's pre byline T. Morris, you know. And, well, uh, you know, but yeah, but when you use your headshot on social media, don't make it from when you were like fifteen. Yeah, find you <laughs> yeah, we also mentioned that. Like time has not touched you. People are not going to find you. <laughs> they're going to be very disappointed. I don't know why. I mean, I don't know why authors are more like Terry Brooks, where they just say, "Look, this is the way I look now." Okay, accept <laughs> right? Deal with it. I got snow on the roof. You know, I got old. That happens. <laughs> That's right. All right, everyone out there, embrace yourself. Yeah. Get that headshot. You know, get the good side. Take it. Let everyone know. Thank you, Jay Cliff. Thank Lots you. of info to digest. I know my brain is spinning. That's why I need a book so I can just ingest it slowly, bits at a right. time. Um, yeah. Okay. So again, I just totally lost my train of thought. That happens. T Pip. Oh my goodness. I just love y'all names. I just love saying them. <laughs> <laughs> T. We, 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 we get that a lot. We get that a lot. We sometimes uh, call my peep. Peep. <laughs> peep. No. T Peep. I almost made a TV joke. <laughs> okay, anyway, on that note, thank you so much, everyone out there in the audience. On the mention of Discord, Keystroke Medium does have a Discord channel. So if you want to come and hang out with us, you can find us on there. And I am terrible at this because I don't even know how to find us on there, but I do have Discord. I need to look that up, figure it out myself so I know how to send you to it. Um, also, our Facebook group, Keystroke Medium, we're the only ones out there. And yeah, T yeah that's what I need right there. Thank you, T. <laughs> You just held up Discord for dummies. Yes, I need all of those. Um, thank you, Patricia, Corey, Jay, Cliff, Josh, Walt. I know Shadow the Illustrator was up in there earlier. I know there's a few more people. I'm uh, Rick was in there. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Be sure to check us out next time where we're going to talk about more reading, writing, and everything in between right here on Keystroke Mediums, The Writer's Journey. Good night, you guys.